Today we're talking about Prunus Americana or wild plum, sometimes called Native American plum, uh, yellow plum, red plum, and uh, I'm sure many other many other names, uh, but mostly just wild plum or American plum. That, that's another, I guess, common name for it. We've been growing it here not for a long time. Uh, we got some last year, and it has it, it's an it's an awesome tree, and it's a great for integrating into a, a permaculture system. Uh, it's great for well, really any any homestead system at all. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today. And first of all, I am standing in our uh, pig paddocks. Okay, so we have this area that it's behind me that are pig paddocks and it's not I, ideal land. There's lots of stumps in it and everything else and there's, there's shrubs that grow. But one of the things that we do is we integrate trees and shrubs, edible trees and shrubs into these paddocks so that eventually the pigs will eat them. So we've got some apple back here. We've got mulberry. We're trying to grow some black walnut in here as well. And today we're going to be adding Prunus Americana or American plum. And American plum is awesome. It, um, it, it creates uh, thickets. Okay, so it kind of grows in thickets. It doesn't get really big. Uh, I, I think I think it gets to to be about 25 feet tops, and I'm sure that there's outliers that are above that. Um, here we have it growing in our edible forest garden. We've got it growing in, in Monica's um, medicinal herb garden, and in the, the there's one in the medicinal herb garden that's it's already like nine feet, ten feet tall, and it was we just got it last year as these little 18 inch seedlings, really. It also makes a great rootstock, so you can graft onto American plum as a rootstock. It's obviously edible, it's great for wildlife, and it's medicinal. Not only that, it can grow, it can tolerate, uh, it can tolerate drier areas, it can even tolerate uh, moister areas. It's off, often found along stream banks. It has a wide range. When you look it up, I mean, it's, it's all the way from, it'll do fine out here in Idaho to Montana, all the way over to New York, and then all the way down south as well. And there are even stories in, in um, well, not stories, but the in the journals of like Lewis and Clark, they talked about wild plum and how that was one of the, one of the foods that they, they gathered along the way. Okay, so there, this is a, um, a historical, tree that's great to plant as well just for those types of reasons and you can see it right here behind me i've uh, we bought a bunch last year or is it was it last year the year before either way we had a bunch of extra rootstock that just stayed together and i ended up just putting a bunch of them inside of one pot and uh, put it up on our deck and it it did well and um you know winter came and i just kind of threw the pot down outside and you know, I think it even fell over <laughs> and, and um, they're, they're getting ready to, to bud out right now. So I'll show you that here in just a minute. But what, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to add some wild plum to these, this pig paddock right here. Okay, I'm not going to worry about spreading it all out. I'm, I'm just, I don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to really kind of almost like create a thicket right here. Okay, so I'm just going to dig a big hole, plant a bunch and let it go. And after a few years, it will, it will start suckering and creating... Um, almost like a thicket. And that's what I want. I, I would really w want that to be able to drop food for pigs and um, and be able to provide, you know, also for us. But we also have this planted elsewhere. Uh, but for here, it's just kind of like fire and forget. Plant it. And hopefully it all does well. And and eventually we'll drop food for pigs. And like I said, uh, in conjunction with the, the few other things in here, We've got a good shot of being able to produce a bunch of food for the pigs in the system that they are normally in, which is very cool. I'm just showing you a little bit about our, our paddocks here. We do have three different paddocks plus a, right behind me, we've got a, um, uh, you can call it a pig pen if you want to, but it's basically an area where we, if we need to extra rest, it's kind of like a sacrifice area. It's also an area where we, if we bring piglet, piglets in, we'll raise them out there for the first few weeks, get them used to us and and all of that, and then start rotating here through these paddocks. Three paddocks rotating about every five or six days. And then, like I said, if we need to, we need extra time for rest, we put them back in there into the sacrifice area and it works out really well. Okay, so 
American plum. It can be grafted. It can be eaten. It can be dried. It can be uh, eaten fresh. It could be uh, made into jams and jellies and pastes and, and different things like that. Uh, made into wines. All of that. It's also medicinal. Okay, it's also medicinal. The, the American Indians use wild plum extensively, obviously as a food, but they also use the bark um, uh, to make different concoctions, uh, different medicinals, from any, anywhere from uh, abrasions uh, to different things to help, you know, not just the single thing, but they would add it with other things to help with things like diarrhea. Just amazing what was done with uh, these wild foods. Um, it is uh, considered to be astringent and a, a sedative. Okay, meaning like astringent, meaning like if you bite into it, you know, those small fruits that, that it does produce, it's going to be not just sour, but like a like a drying effect in your mouth, almost like a pucker factor. Okay, so it's um, astringent like that. And um, other than that, let's get going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to dig a hole and, and I'll show you up close and we'll plant it. Okay, so here's the, the neglected American plum that sat out all winter, tipped over. <laughs> I just want to show you it's starting to starting to bud out. Let's see if we can. There we go. Kind of see that. Just about ready to bud out. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to plant three or four of those into that hole and just let it let it go ahead and create its own thicket. I do want to save a couple. Um, for other purposes. All right, let's let's take a look at these guys and see how they look. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and probably keep these two kind of intact and they'll go kind of back in just for now. I'm going to go replant them somewhere else, but this bunch right here, I'm just going to go ahead and plant here. See how that, see how we do. I can feel. I just didn't get around to these last year. That's what happened. Incredible. Pretty good root structure. And a lot of these, wow, this one is really bound up in all, all these. So hopefully they'll be okay. See this one? Yep, that just happened. Okay. side and we have these guys in there there's some extensive rooting in there you can kind of see that let me just dig this out a little more
I'm gonna pull that one aside. The rest of these, they're staying. All right, and that's it. I'm just gonna let it work itself out and see if see if this turns into a a thicket and see where we go. I ended up keeping one extra one over here, and I'm gonna go plant a couple of those in the edible forest garden. And uh, I'll probably keep one potted up. See if there's uh, you know I always end up trading a lot of different things, so I think I'm gonna keep one potted up. All right, there you go.